Welcome to First Person Defender. Real people put into realistic self-defense training scenarios. These are real scenarios. Hey, give me your money. The role player does not know what's gonna happen. We go through the first scenario, see how they handle it, and then we pick one thing that they could have done to increase their survivability. Train it a little bit, and then run them through a similar scenario. Each weapon is loaded with Simunition FX marking cartridges, the most realistic, non-lethal alternative to live ammunition. Simunition is the closest thing to the real deal. Once you feel the pain penalty once, you don't want to feel it again. For this type of force-on-force -force training, role players are required to wear protective gear. Come on, hit me! It is as real as it gets. Heart rate's elevated, their respiratory rate's elevated, their adrenaline is dumping into their blood. They are scared and amped up. I got a gun! Back up! Get out of my heart! My name is Jeff Quinn. I've been shooting since I was five years old. Started with a BB gun, got my first uh, shotgun when I was 11 years old, and uh, got my first handgun when I was, bought it when I was in high school. Got to, had to get my parents to sign for it for me. Been shooting ever since. Jeff is an interesting character. You know, good old country boy, and obviously loves his guns. Been carrying for a while. I've been carrying since I was 19 years old. Started carrying regularly. Before that, I kept one in my truck all the time. Jeff is still very typical of the folks that we see that carry concealed. You know, been shooting their whole life, grew up in the country hunting and whatnot, and have been carrying for a long time. I have a couple of times had to had to pull my gun out, and many more times than that, it's been comforting to have it. Thankfully, I've never had to pull a trigger on it. Until you've been in a gunfight, in a confrontation where you're shooting at someone, they're shooting at you, you really have no clue what you're getting into. I've never used any simulation before, so this will be my first time on that. I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Before the scenario could begin, Greg and Jeff went over the safety and procedures for training with simunitions. The scenario this morning I'm pretty excited about. Uh, it's going to simulate that uh, he's at an ATM, a famed location for strong arm robberies essentially, taking people by surprise and off guard. For the scenario, you're going to be coming up to the ATM. You're going to pull your wallet out, get your card in the machine, you know, put punch in your code, wait for your money, and uh, just let the scenario unfold. I'm going to get in real quick and real close. And I may not present a weapon right away, but I'm going to make my intent clear to him. Something may happen where it's, it's no big deal. I'm going to be within distance to, to reach out and touch him. And if he goes for a gun, I'm going to take it from him. I'm not sure yet what I've got myself into. Uh, hopefully I'll survive the scenario. What we're going to work on this morning with Jeff, uh, I can guarantee you didn't get in your concealed carry class. As Jeff makes his way to the ATM, another customer has gotten ahead of him at the machine. He was there ahead of me, I stand back awake, you know, like you politely do. As the customer completes his transaction, Jeff steps up to the ATM. As Jeff enters in his code, the next guy in line begins to close in. Hey man, enter your code in. Enter your code in. Huh? Enter your code in. I'll put it in. Right now. I'll Give me your it. money. I'll put it in. Give right. me your money. When the bond between hand and gun feels as true as a perfectly placed shot, it's not by accident. It's by design. MP Advanced by design. Enter your code in. Before the break, Jeff had found himself in a dangerous encounter. It. Do it now. Not gonna do it. Now, backed into a corner, Jeff begins to run out of options. You know, try to talk him out of it at first, but then that didn't work. Man, you better give me your money now. Not gonna do it. Man, 
and I gave him kind of an opportunity. I'm looking around as the bad guy, making sure no one else is walking up. Man, you do better doing that. I was cornered. There was no way to, no way to back out of that situation. Man, you better give me your money now. Back up, back up. He went for the gun. I grabbed it, uh, trapped the gun. Man, give me your money. And, and then took it from him. So I was pretty much uh, just a victim at that point. All right, index, index, index. Okay. All right, go ahead and holster up. There you go. So what do you think? You surprised me. <laughs> the first scenario worked out perfectly, like clockwork. Exactly what I wanted to happen. He got me, you know. He come up on me, surprised me. And I wouldn't expect him to do what he did, you know, go for my weapon and all. That's not saying anything bad about Jeff. That's training he has not received yet. And he should so. have just gave you the money, you know. Right. And, and that's something that yeah. we're going to definitely talk about, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. What's your life worth? You can just give your give him the money, uh, uh -huh. and then hopefully he walks off. Now, uh -huh. if you give him the money and he starts escalating, all right, let's go to yeah. your car. Well, now it may uh -huh. be time to yeah. choose a fight. What I did like that you did is you didn't immediately go for your gun. Jeff actually he did surprise me a little bit because I thought he was going to go for his gun right away, um, but he waited and he tried to talk me out. So I had to step it up a little bit and escalate. There is a, a reactionary gap that uh -huh. we kind of need to maintain or utilize other force before we go to guns. Right. Shooting skills are not enough. Knowing how to shoot, marksmanship is not enough. We're gonna to go to the range. Uh -huh. We're going to train on a couple of close quarters and contact distance uh, skills and tactics. Uh -huh. You know, these encounters happen very, very, very close to contact range where people are grabbing you. And you need a skill to bridge the gap from that to going to your gun. At that ATM, Man, I, I closed in your bubble real quick. Right. If you don't know how to get to your gun and keep it from the bad guy, it doesn't do you any good. So you have to go out and get some sort of combatives training and practice that in tune with your, uh, your shooting skills. You know, I can play that role. We talk about devaluing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to square up and act like a tough guy. I'll have my hands up. As you can see, I'm talking with my hands. So if I need a strike, I don't have to set, come back, right. move my hands up. If I need a block, my hands are already here shielding my vital area. So from here, we're going to shoot from what's called the retention position. All right, I don't want to give my gun to the bad guy. I don't want to stick it out there. But what I do want to do is I want to make sure my appendages are clear. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my garment, get my pistol. And as I get my pistol out, all I'm doing is I'm bringing my support hand up to my chest and I'm dropping my elbow. Uh -huh. Now, if you can see, my gun's in nice and close, but I've got a lot of power, a lot of strength right here. I can also bring my elbow up to kind of shield my face. Uh -huh. Now, you've got to be careful because look what's in front of my muzzle right, right here. My elbow is. So if I were to drop my elbow down or encroach on my muzzle space, it could end up bad. So I want to keep my elbow up here, keep my face, my throat, my eyes, and everything protected from this would-be bad guy. From right here, I can go ahead and lock it into my chest. If you notice, I'm slightly canting the pistol out uh -huh. so the slide can move freely and not impede on my pectoral uh -huh. muscle. My sights are aligned with my target. I've uh -huh. made that conscious decision to fire, and I'm just going to press off that round. All right? Combining simple combatives and handgun tactics, Greg demonstrates how the shooting drill will run. Strike him in the eyes. As I strike him in the eyes, claw down, I can go ahead and draw my pistol, elbow up, and give him a good wallop. And uh, I think that one took care of him pretty good on that one, right? Now it's time for Jeff to give it a run. After they worked on the proper techniques, Jeff was ready to put rounds on target. Nice and slow. So it's strike, claw, Hand across your chest, draw, drop that elbow, and two <laughs> Nice, very good. All right, beautiful. Go ahead and holster up. So that is forcing our adversary. If I'm here talking, that's forcing our adversary. Whoa, I'm, now I'm back from you, and that gives you that opportunity uh -huh. to then shoot me off of you and create that right. distance. As an instructor, we want to try and give them everything, but we have such a little short period of time, we're giving them one technique that could help them in that scenario and then putting them right back into it. The Ruger LC380 is the perfect pairing of the award-winning LC9 pistol and the popular 380 auto cartridge. It features a dovetailed high-visibility three-dot sight system, seven-round magazine, and finger grip extension floor plate. The Ruger LC380, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger.
era Black Ops, the baddest tactical 1911 on the planet. Nozzler Defense Ammunition is loaded up front with the bonded performance line of bonded core defense bullets. Professionals trust their next move to Nozzler Defense. First Person Defender, brought to you by XS Sights, Smith & Wesson, Nosler, Crimson Trace, Simunition, and Remington. We're going to run the same scenario again, similar scenario, not exactly the same. We're going to throw a little monkey wrench in it for him, and hopefully he can use those techniques that we talked about uh, in the next scenario. I'm going to try to use some of the techniques he showed me over there to uh, uh, better protect my weapon, keep him off of it, and uh, get the round off at close range if I have to. I was uh, loitering by the ATM. We had uh, another uh, role player coming in, walking up to the ATM with Jeff, and he was real close, kind of making him feel uncomfortable. And I waited till they got up in line, and then I turned around to start moving to flank them into that corner as the bad guy to get both of them. Hey, the machine's, the machine's not working. Hey. I lifted up my shirt, showed him that I had a gun in my waistband. Give me your money, give me your, give me your money now. The uh, other onlooker role player took off running, and then it was just me and Jeff. That was by coincidence, right? Give me your money now. Give me your money. Give me your money. He kind of kept his body bladed, kept his gun side away from me. He did go to guns right away, but I moved in. I grabbed his gun. Give me your money. Give it to me. I protected my gun. I pushed him back a little. Got it out. Got it on target. I thought I was justified in shooting him, so I did so. All right, index, index. I could have taken his card, his gun, his, I could have taken his life. And uh, he felt he was in imminent danger being backed in like that. And uh, he did what he felt he had to do. All right, we're clear. Go ahead and mask off. That one work out a little bit better for you? Yeah, a little bit. A lot better. Uh, I still got my hand on his gun. I would have liked to see him start striking me a little bit more earlier, but uh, he did a great job. You did go to guns right away, and I saw it, and then I moved in, but you kept it trapped in there. You uh -huh. spun out, you uh, struck me, and, and you know shot me from that retention position. The training that I got today is very useful, probably as useful as any of I've ever had in a brief time we've had it. It's taught me you know, to, to do a little better protecting my weapon. You know, The first scenario I went through, he got my weapon, and he took it away from me in Exile. At best, it's embarrassing. At worst, it'll get you killed. I appreciate it. Everything you showed me has been, been really helpful. Well, good. Good. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Keep training. Thanks a lot. Take care. You have to go out and get professional training. I can't stress that enough. You have to then go out and practice what you've learned and stay proficient. It is a perishable skill, and uh, you know it's a skill your life depends on.